Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to the channel. In this Inspired By series, I like to write an original piece of music, either inspired by an artist or a genre of music. I then show you each individual guitar part and I share some of the techniques that make it that style of music in hopes that you can incorporate it in your own playing. In this video, we're gonna take on punk rock. Let's dive into the track and then I'll break it all down for you. Holy cow, this thing's a beast. I need to do a quick shout out to my buddy John for setting me up with this guitar. I sent him a text and I said, I'm doing a video on punk. Do you have any punk guitars? And this is what he came up with. This, this thing is a beast, <laughs> an absolute beast. And you can see that it's had a chair of stage play and it's just, it's just a monster. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so thanks John for that. So when I was looking into punk rock music, I was noticing some certain characteristics. Obviously, when you do this, there's some key techniques that we need to do. And one of them mainly is palm muting. And the second one really is learning how to mute the strings. I mean, they're just thrashing away here. And you got to make sure that you're not playing the strings that you don't want to hear, basically. Another thing that I noticed, too, a little bit about this music is that there seems to be some sections that they define and um, a lot of them has to do with again palm muting is one in one section then you'll notice they'll open it up and play more full chords and another thing they do the stabs in a section of a song and also another very interesting thing is I, I have no idea what key we're really playing in it, it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all the whole idea behind punk music is just to get out of you the emotion that you're feeling and a lot of times you know just go with what sounds good it just sounds good with your ear whatever you hear in your head that you want to get out and convey in an emotional way just put it out there it doesn't have to be theoretically correct it's correct if it sounds good that's all that matters and this is a clear example of that I mean we're playing B flat to B flat to C to G and that whole chord progression is really in, in the entire song, except when we get to part, like I'm gonna call these, let me break these down instead of guitar parts because all I did was one guitar part and then doubled it and panned it left and right. But let's just go ahead and break down each section of the song. So the first section of the song kind of starts off with these octaves and it's on that E flat to the B flat real quickly and then to the C real quickly like it's one stab for those and what I'm doing here is I'm just doing octaves so I've got my first finger on E flat on the A string and then my pinky is playing the E flat on the G string and so there's strings in between it right we have our D string we have our e, low E string and the strings underneath it but I'm trying to use my hands and my thumb to just mute everything so I can hit all the strings Hopefully you're just hearing those two notes. And then I take that shape, move it down to the B flat, and then quickly go to the C, same shape again, on the A and the G strings where we're playing those notes. Back to the G, back to the E flat. So this whole part basically goes like this. And I'm breaking 
breaking the rule a little bit here. I noticed that a lot of times it's really a lot of downstrokes. I'm playing some downstrokes and some upstrokes. So you can just mess around with that. So that's basically section one of the song. For section two of the song, we're going to kind of copy that same type of rhythm idea, but we're just going to play the E flat to the C. And it goes like this, open first, and then copy. palm muting by putting the fleshy part of my hand on the bridge here and I'm opening it up to get things going first and then palm muting it down. So up tempo it sounds like this. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun and I recommend that you Practice that slowly first if you can't get that the chunking going. You can just start out slow. And a lot of uh, punk music really does have a lot of a lot of groove to it. It really is in the pocket. People are really playing nice and tight. I did my best if I could in this example, but I know that people think that you know it's kind of sloppy playing or whatever. I, I didn't find that. I find you know, you listen to bands like Green Day and things of that nature, they are super tight with these rhythms. And, you know, Billy Joe's, you know, right hand is just amazing. It is spot on every time he does these types of things. And remember to play with attitude. I mean, that's the whole point of this, is just to get everything out of you that you can. All right, so that was section two. For section three, we're kind of going to open it up. So remember I was talking about the characteristics of punk music where you kind of have a palm muted section and then a section where you're kind of opening things up. Well, that's what this is going to be. And it's going to be kind of based off of obviously the same chords that we've been playing, um, especially in the beginning part. So it goes. <laughs> And basically you'll hear in between my I'm doing some scratches and all I'm doing is I'm putting pressure on the chord when I need it and then I'm lifting up my hand and just raking the strings with my pick in. You can even practice that and make that an exercise. And the whole thing basically copies the first section of the song, but you're now with open chords. So the E flat, E flat, C, G. And I try to do kind of like a call and response type of thing, where I go. That was the call and the response. So I stop the second time around just on C, and I just do some scratching. And again, the idea behind these parts is to help you learn how to mute the strings while you're um, playing. <laughs> the next section basically is going to be those eighth note stabs that we talked about. So you'll notice if you have a quarter note, one, two, three, four, you can break those into eighth notes, which would be one and two and three and four and. And since this song is such at a high pace, it would sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And you'll notice there that when I'm playing the B flat and also the G, it's just a quick stab. One and two and three and four. So it's the eighth note on the end of four. One and two and three and four. <laughs> now I messed that up. <laughs> one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And you could really dig in and just get a lot of attitude with that. And then when you come out of this section, we basically go into the previous section where we're really just going to open up the chords again 
and do that call and response type of thing. But on the second time around, I'm gonna do those eighth note stabs on the C chord to end the song. And that's the whole song. So some key takeaways and key things to practice is when you're playing those octave shapes, work on your muting. You can use your pinky to mute the strings, the B and E string. You can use your first finger to arch over to cover the D string, so that's muted. And you can bring your thumb over like I'm doing to, to kind of dampen out the E string. And the other thing to work on, another key practice thing is the muting. And try different things, just try eighth notes. One, two, three, And then you can start adding in your stabs. And just mess around with different rhythms when you're doing your muting. So when you're practicing these types of exercises with the palm muting, make sure you have some sort of steady beat going on. It could be a metronome, or it could be a drum loop, or even remember, I also offer these tracks for free that you can download in the description below. And there's two tracks usually. One is of the full band and the other one is just the drums and bass. So you can practice with these exact guitar parts that I just showed you, or you can come up with your own parts and be creative. And that's another Inspired By video down. Hey, if you have any suggestions for another video that you might like to see in this series, please leave it in the comments below. And also while you're down there, would you consider helping me grow the channel by subscribing down below, hitting the like button and knock on the bell, all these things really do help me out, and I'm so grateful for your support. As always, I wish you a wonderful day.